So we just finished snapping a line and we're gonna put on this passive tape, which is gonna seal um, the plywood to the concrete. So on a house, this, this area right here is uh, a really leaky spot in the house. What happens when you end up getting your blower door test on the house, it ends up getting sucked under your plate. And when that happens, it'll bring in moisture and that's where you can have rot and stuff. So we're gonna seal that up with this product here which is a uh, passive tape. Passive seal. Passive seal. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so anyways, uh, we're gonna put that on and we'll move on to the next step. So on this house, we're using this passive tape for around the windows. We're gonna use it down the sides, along the top. We gotta to make sure that this bottom's opened up and that if there is any water that gets trapped under the sill, that it's got the option to come out here and, and then run down the space here. So this is uh, passive tape. Uh, it's a high performance air barrier tape in replacement of tuck tape. It's great to work with. Like um, here, I'll show you right now. You can take it out and you can really stretch it, which is like, I can't explain to you guys enough how nice that is when you have the ability to be able to stretch it out and work with it. Like that teared, but like we're on the end, but it is, it's so nice when you're be able to go like around a corner or whatever, and it has the ability to stretch because so often you're trying to do this origami and the pieces are just, you know, you get a little bit more length out of the piece and you're doing less laps, which saves you time and also makes it a lot easier. We, we don't have it. Uh, the reason why is because right here, I don't know if you can see, but this turns the wall here and then our air barrier goes along the, the length of the garage. It's not as pertinent that it's airtight because the air pressure from uh, the HRV or, or the bathroom fans aren't gonna be trying to pull air through the wall and, and start infiltrating the house with, with uh, moisture. Yeah, so we ended it here. Um, and it actually ties into the side of the garage wall and then goes along the front of the face of the house and all the way around the outside. So our air barrier on the exterior of the house actually comes through this garage wall and ties in and goes right across the front of the house because you have to have this continuous line all the way around the house. And that's really important that you don't lose connection. So when we're detailing it that, you have to kind of think a couple of steps ahead as you're going through the build to make sure that you're not getting out of sequence. So sometimes you're putting like little pieces of material in just so that you can tie that in later, later on. So, yeah.
So I'm just gonna prep one of these condensate drains with that passive tape again. You can see it's kind of a little wet around here. So what we've been doing when we found that there's a little bit of moisture, we've just hit it with the heat gun a little bit just so that we can dry that area off. So yeah, I'll just uh, show you that process. So because you're always trying to look for that shingling effect, you're always starting from the bottom. So we put this bottom piece on first. I guess something worth mentioning too, is that this is another air sealing detail that we're trying to do. Trying to make this house as, as airtight as we can. So we're coming in here. I, one sec, I'll just show you on the other side here after I get this one rolled around. So we're just taking a piece about uh, two, three inches long. Like you said, starting from the bottom then doing the sides. Oops. This stuff is quite nice to work with because it's so flexible. You can see you can just move it around, stretch it. Um, compared to like a, um, a tuck tape, which it just wouldn't really work the same. Yeah, and we're just trying to make sure that we got no little micro holes or any holes really. When it's also, you know, you don't have all these holes then bugs don't find a way into your home either. So that's not a good spot. Good point, I guess. So. This tape is not the same price as tuck tape. So that's something to take into consideration. But I tell you, when you can start to flex it and move it around, and the speed in which you can work because you don't have to put, you know, I'm putting four pieces on instead of like six or eight pieces to get around this thing. And, uh, and knowing that it's got some flexibility and that it sticks well, that it will last a substantial amount of time compared to a tuck tape that, you know, it, it might end up peeling off a lot sooner than you'd hope. So there you go. There's the prep of the condensate drains. So right here, what we ended up having to do, and we had talked about it in another section of the video, was that um, be because this material maybe should have gone on first, but we had these windows installed before, we ended up having to tuck this material up behind here, which then kind of peeled this window flashing away from the wall. So to keep that nice and airtight, we ended up putting another piece of passive tape to seal that in and make sure it wasn't flopping around. It does look like the lap is wrong, but we've actually have this piece under here. So this is actually just an airtightness detail. So yeah, anyway, it's just pointing that out. And um, yeah, we're just gonna continue along here and shoot as uh, things come up that I feel are important. So what we've done here is we've cut around the edge of the beam here and then we got to make this airtight so that the air doesn't get sucked down in these little cracks, bottom, top, sides. So yet again, we're going to start with shingling. We're going to start on the bottom and work our way up. And when you're cutting this, you want to cut it just a little bit off the corner so that the material can pull around because it can stretch a little bit. And then if you want to come around to the other side, we can show that. Same thing, but... 
Come on. Sometimes what takes longest is just getting the backer off the damn, damn tape. There we go, and then I'm just gonna put another little piece on the top to tie in that. So I'm just gonna go through the house and kind of show you some spots that we use the passive tape on the interior of the house. So uh, we've used it around hose bibs on the inside of the building. And then we've also done that on the outside and taped that. The other great thing, and I know that I pointed it out before, but when you tape it, that's a less likely chance that you're gonna end up getting bugs into your house because they got nowhere to infiltrate instead of just a hole that's kind of, you know, air, moisture, all these things are gonna come through those holes. So the more you can seal it up, the longer your house is gonna last. We'll go to here, uh, electrical plugs. These are um, supposed to be sealed, but what happens is the electrician, he pokes his wire through there and then there ends up being a hole. On the video of Roberta Ranch, we ended up getting aero barrier to come in and you can actually, I think we got a video of showing inside the plug where you can see that the wire, where it comes through at the very back, there's air getting through there. So on this place, we decided to tape all the plugs that are gonna be part of our secondary air barrier because we're gonna have our exterior air barrier and then we're gonna have our insulation in our wall. Then we're gonna have our inside air barrier, which is also acting as a vapor barrier. Exterior air barrier is actually vapor open so the moisture can travel through that uh, which is good because you have to have that moisture be able to get out if it ever does get in we've done all the wires kind of coming through the tops of the walls there too and then what we've done is we've ended up spray foaming those holes from the bottom uh, just to, for extra assurance because what I've heard is that if you just spray foam it over time that spray foam will kind of deteriorate or, or shrink up and then doesn't fill that hole as, as best you can. So the spray foam is more like a secondary helping part of it compared to what we're completely relying on. And there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of extra protection to try and keep that building as airtight, bug tight, moisture tight. And uh, I'll just take the camera here for a second. And this is our split system for our heat pump. And so this is a ceiling cassette. So you can see how this has all got taped all the way around, making sure that there's no way for the air to get in. Because um, there was no bag or anything to air seal these. So that's what we've had to do, taped all in there. And uh, if there's any little spots on the top, we've ended up filling those and taping over them. One of the things that has been really tricky, and, but is another part of good communication is, is making sure that um, the sub trades knew that it was one item per one hole. So through any of the spaces where we've broken through the air bear, it's one thing through one hole. If you look up here, they've dripped. Usually this ends up coming through. All these wires come through this one hole. So this is one of these examples of where they wanted to put three things through one hole and caught that and then we've now put one thing through one hole tape that all up and then we're going to end up spray foaming in here if you want to come up you can take a peek at what we've done on the top there and this is for um, this split system so this is going to be a wall unit so this is where the split system heat pump's gonna be. This is gonna be where the wall cassette. So the wall cassette's gonna be here. This right here is the condensate line, and this right here is the other condensate line for the one in, in the living room. Uh, those both run out here, and then that just drips onto the ground. This is the lines that will end up going over to where the actual heat pump is, which is over here. So this is where all of the um, line sets go out and you can see here down here usually this comes out in like a, a as, like see how this is all put together that comes through the wall but we've got them to split that all apart uh, and then 
we've taped that on the outside and then we're gonna end up just spray foaming all around this to make sure that it is nice and sealed too. We'll go outside and we'll take a peek at what that looks like on the outside. These are the condensate lines on the outside of the house and how that got finished. And then this is how we ended up doing where the, the hose bib comes out or the tap for your, your hose. Then we'll go down here and this is where the line sets come out. This is the, the wire for the heat pump and then these are the line sets and the, the power to go back inside. There's still more of the air sealing to do, but uh, we started on this side of the house and we're working our way through. And uh, we have all of our rough in done to this point. What other things are we sharing at this point? Um, yeah, so on to uh, the next step of the process and uh, thank you very much. At Buck Robertson Contracting, we do contracting with communication. So if you'd like your house built with communication, call us today.